Enigmatic E. Hey everyone, today we're going to be working with the form again. I already did a video on the form, but this time I'm going to be using After Effects. There's a plugin through Motion Bro that allows you to do a lot of the movements and keyframes inside of After Effects and transfer all that information into the form. If you're not familiar with the form, there are some viral videos, you've probably already seen them, where somebody like jumps or does some kind of pose and then suddenly everything freezes and then it transitions into AI video where you start to see like the camera move almost like in this 3D environment. So the plugin I'm talking about is called AE to SD and it's totally free. You just gotta download this plugin called Motion Bro and then download the AE to SD file and then install it into Motion Bro. And like I said, everything's totally free and I'm gonna show you how to do that. You also have to download Stable Diffusion and then install Deform through Stable Diffusion. And I have links to videos on how to install both in the description. All right, so without further ado, Let's get right into it. So one of the first things we're gonna do is we're gonna download Motion Pro. There's a few ways you can do this. You can do it through Creative Cloud, which we're gonna do in a bit, or you can do it manually if you click on Manual. By the way, I'll put a link to all these in the description. If you go to Manual, it said you can install it by installing ZXP, which you know, create an account and you can install it through here, it's free. Or you can install it manually right here and you just gotta put it in the right folder. I'm going to be installing it through Creative Cloud. So let me bring it up. I'm gonna come in here to Creative Cloud. I'm gonna to go to Stock and Marketplace. And then from here, I'm going to go to Plugins. Now I'm going to go to Search. I'm gonna put Motion Pro, and it's gonna pop up right here. So I'm gonna click on that, and I'm just going to press Install. So it is installed now, and now what we need to do after this, we wanna come into this website here. So now we have to get the AE to SD file, and this is what's going to be installed into Motion Bros. So you can put zero. If you wanna donate something out of like appreciation, you can always do that. And then you just click on, I want this. Uh, you put your email, and it should send you an email. Once it sends you the email, you open a link, and it's going to take you to this place, and you're going to download the file right here where it says AE to SD, download the file, save it somewhere where you know where it's at. Once you download it, you should have this file where it ends in .mbr, and we're going to put this into Motion Bro. So let's open After Effects. So now that we have After Effects open, we're gonna come here to where it says Window, and we're going to Extensions, and then you should already have Motion Bro here installed. So you click on that, it's gonna open the Motion Bros window. Click on this folder icon that you see on the left side, it's gonna open this up. The way you install AE to SD is you click on this little down arrow right here, and then it's gonna ask you to select a package. So you wanna go to the folder where you saved the file we just downloaded, right here, the .mbr, and then you're gonna click on that, open, and it's going to install it for you. Once it's done, you should have this available to you. So you come here and then you have all the parameters we're gonna be working with today. So here in After Effects, we wanna create a composition, right? Clicking right here where it says create a new composition. Then you can name it whatever you want. I'm just gonna put AE to SD. You wanna make sure that dimensions are what you want it to be. So in this case, since I wanna do it for like Reels and TikTok, so I'm just going to do 720 by 1280. And then the frame rate, I'm just gonna make this 24. And for the amount of time, I'm just gonna make this 15 seconds and then press okay. All right, so now I have my composition. I know my frame rate, I know the length, and I know the width and height. So we wanna come here to the form and then we wanna make the changes we just made. I'm going to make this 720 by 1280. I'm gonna go to output and I'm going to make this 24 frames per second. So I'm gonna put 24. And then in keyframes, I'm going to put the amount of frames. So 15 times 24, what is that? It's 360. So I'm gonna put 360. So we have these three things matching. We have the, the same frame rate, we have the same length, and we have the same width and height. And then we also have whether it's 2D or 3D. So I'm going to make sure it's 3D because I want this to be in 3D. And then I'm gonna come back to After Effects and then come here to Motion Bro, click on Add 3D Scene and then Apply. And then it's gonna add a bunch of these layers that you see, right? And actually I wanna move this to the side so that I can see this screen the entire time. So so now that we're here, this is where we're gonna put our keyframes where we're gonna control the camera. If you come here to transform, the, the position moves in 2D space and rotation does moves in like 3D space. So if, for example, like if you try to move the X position right here, it's not gonna do anything. But if you click on this little stopwatch here, it's gonna create a keyframe and then you move forward a few frames 
and then you move it, you're going to see how this little reference is showing you what is happening with the movement like this, right? Yeah. And if you press Y, it's going to do something similar. You're just going to move up like that, kind of like in 2D space and Z position uh, allows you to zoom in. So when I create a keyframe for Z position and then I go a few frames forward and then go up, then it zooms in like this, like you're seeing here. So if you want more like a 3D space, then here you don't actually have to create a keyframe to see how, what it's doing, you see. So like you move this and it's going to rotate it this way with the X rotation, with Y rotation, it's going to move it left and right. And then Z rotation is going to do it uh, what they call roll, which is like rotating in place. So now it's about making the movement that you want to make. Let's start by doing a slow zoom in by pressing Z position and then Zooming in, right? Zooming in slowly. I actually want that a little bit faster. So this definitely gives you like a visual aid of what things are gonna look like at the end. And then I wanna zoom in like drastically, like a lot, right? But then here I wanna create a reference so I can see what's going on. So I'm gonna add a reference right here. When you add the reference, it's gonna add another checkered square here so you can see kind of what's happening because this is gonna disappear and it's gonna show you the next thing that's gonna appear. So it's a, it's all like visual aids, right? Every time you add a reference, it will also add another layer where you can add a prompt so that when it does come to this new reference layer, it could change the prompt into something different. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to change the prompts in a bit. So I don't wanna just zoom in. I actually wanna zoom in and move up a little bit. So uh, the way we do this is I'm going to come here to before the big zoom in happens. You can move from one keyframe to another by pressing J or K. So J to move left and then K to move right keyframes. So I'm going to do rotation X right here. Uh, that created a keyframe, right? I'm going to press K to go to the next keyframe and I'm going to move up like this so that when it zooms in, it's zooming up like this like that and then i also want it to be moving to the right so i'm going to press y uh, k and then to the right zooming in slowly move up like this again i'm going to have it zooming in slowly also kind of rotating slowly so i'm going to do rotation z rotation z going to be like moving like this so it's going to be bam rotation like this and then here i'm going to create another reference okay so another reference layer. So it's going to go this, like this. And this is the next reference layer. So a lot of these viral animations is a constant zooming in. So it's not like this dynamic and kind of movements. I'm just doing it because I'm trying to demonstrate what this does. But typically you just have like a constant zoom and a, 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 a slight like tilt a little bit. Um, and we can do that. You can do that to finish off. Maybe we do just like zooming in and uh, like a, t a slight tilt, but I'm going to be zooming in for a very long time. So I'm going to bring this up and then dragging this all the way to the end. So it's going to be doing something like this, right? Maybe if you want it to go faster, then make the amount even bigger. So I'm going to add another reference here so I can see what's happening. You're going to see the other one. Yeah. So this is going to be how it's going to look. But then we also want to kind of like a tilt, like you see in a lot of uh, these viral videos. So I'm going to be doing like a tilt with a uh, Y and X. So Y and X, I'll create two keyframes for that. And I'm going to be doing like a slight moving to the right and also moving up. So it's going to be doing something like this. And then it ends. All right. I'm not doing something super complicated. I'm just, this is all for just demonstration. So you can go ahead as complicated as you want. I'm just doing something very basic. Actually, another great thing you can do is you can interpolate these. So you can select all of these and just press F9 and then it creates this interpolation so that it's not so stiff and just moving, you know, linearly It kind of acts like a speed ramp. So it's a little bit more smooth in the movements. You select these two, for example, the zooming in at the beginning, and then I press graph editor, make sure that I'm at uh, edit speed graph. These are the two keyframes right here, this one and this one for the zoom in. So I'm going to make it zoom in slow at first, and then it's going to zoom in fast at the end. So you see this little bump right here, it's going to be moving slow and then bam, fast. So you can mess around with these as much as you like. If you want it the opposite, then you would bring this back here and then it would start off fast and then slow down. So fast and then slow down. 
So I'm going to keep it like that for now. There's also this little shake feature. If you want to add a shake to your camera, you can always add that. You can also keyframe the intensity of those shakes the way you would like it to happen. I'm not going to add it because I just don't want to add it to this specific animation right now. So now once you're done with the, all the movements and everything you want, we're going to have to transfer this information into a deform. So let's do that right now. We come back here into Motion Bro and we go to where it says copy data, right? Then you come here to where it says info and then show properties for copy. So here we have the properties of things that we keyframed. So translation Z, rotation 3D X, 3D Y, Z, the ones that we made. Anything that we didn't keyframe is not included in here. So we know the information we need to grab. So from here we go to 3D animated properties. It's going to show you all these parameters that we did. So translation Z right here, we're going to click on that. So this window is going to pop up. You got to copy all this data by clicking on control C. And we are going to come into the forum. Make sure we are here in keyframes. We come down here, we look for translation Z, and then we paste this information right here. And let's do that for the rest. I'm gonna close this. So rotation 3D X, rotation 3D X, get that. Copy what's in this window by pressing Control C, rotation X, and then we need to get Y and Z. So let's do that. So now that we have all those parameters in there, let's check out the prompts. So I'm going to close this. I'm going to go to other and prompts by marker. And so now I have the frames where these prompts are by these markers that were set on these new reference layers. So every time you added a reference, it created this layer with these markers on here. You can always move these around, but just know that I think it also moves the placement of where that reference with the checkerboard is at. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to go into the forum. I want to go to prompts and I'm just going to take this off and just paste. And then right here we can add our prompts. So I'm going to do something kind of like those viral videos that you see where something it freezes, right? So I'm going to get this clip and I'm going to have it freeze like right here. Uh, I watched a few episodes of Naruto when I was younger, but uh, I don't know too much about it. I just know that this is from Naruto, at least I think it is. I'm going to do a Naruto based animation. So you don't have to do it this way. You don't necessarily have to use an image if you don't want to. You can just run it without any images, uh, but I'm going to use it so that it kind of follows that, like I said, that trend that we've been seeing a lot. I'm going to get one frame from that video right here. I'm going to copy the path and I'm going to put it here where it says in it and this in it tab. I'm going to put use in it and then paste it in there. I'm going to take off the quotation marks too. So now it's going to use this as a reference to start the first frame and then it's going to generate the rest after that. And also you want to make sure that you have the right checkpoint that you want to use. So I'm going to try rev animated, then I'm ready to generate. So let's see what we get. Hopefully it's something good. Yeah. So now it's using that image to start the first frame and it's going to start to transform slowly into other things. All right. So the video's done. I'm looking, I'm previewing it right now. It looks okay right here at the beginning, but then right here, it's not really creating anything here. It's just like, just kind of like a void right here mostly. And then at the end, uh, you see a person appear. So I do have to make changes probably to the prompts or maybe um, I have to probably make changes to the strength schedule. So according to this, it's the amount of presence of previous frame to influence the next frame. The higher you are, the more consistent you'll get, but then less changes are happening. So. Maybe if we change it to 0 0.6 instead of 0 0.65, uh, maybe it could do something a little bit different. So I just ran the whole thing again and I did change the checkpoint to 2D and a merge. Uh, you can find this model on Civit AI and uh, I was able to create uh, this video that we're going to watch right now. So, all right. So if I play it, you got that little zoom in that we had and then the rotation and then we should have a slow zoom yeah like that and yeah i mean it looks decent right it's not it's not the best animation you know i think for the sake of demonstration this will do so i did change the checkpoint to something else i also uh, made some changes to the prompts to kind of help it out a little bit i also changed the strength i was having these issues where the finger was just kind of going all crazy and wild so i made the strength schedule uh, a little bit higher at frame zero uh, up to frame 35 and then from there it was 0 0.55 
So that's why you're seeing a lot more changes at the end here is because now it's at 0.55. So that's how you can create parameters for the camera inside of After Effects for Deform. That's specifically for 3D, but you can also do uh, something with 2D and 2D is slightly different. So with 2D, the biggest difference is that you don't have to mess around with position Z to zoom in, you just use scale. So for example, you create a keyframe with scale, then you move up and then it scales up like this. So another different thing is this little dot that you see in the middle, it's this layer here, the target point, you can move it and that will become the center point. So now when you zoom in, it will zoom in to that point. So that's why when you like, if I put it here, it's going to move around like this. So this will be the center point with zooming in and also with rotation. So when you rotate, for example, like this, it's gonna rotate that point. So like if I move it here, you're gonna see that it start to shift around because the center point is changing. So yeah, so you can now target specific spots and that you wanna zoom into and do it this way as well. So yeah, that's the biggest difference between 3D and 2D but everything else essentially works the same. You don't have X rotation, Y rotation, and Z rotation in 2D. You just have position, scale, and rotation. This is also an option if you don't have a strong GPU, then this is the route to go because the 3D mode takes a lot more resources. So you have to make sure that it's not in 3D mode, but in 2D mode. So now you combine the original video with the AI video. And so you have something like you see in those viral videos where you start off with real life footage and then it goes into AI. So as you can see, the transition is not as smooth because I think the camera movement was not ideal for something like this, but you see how this works and you can always mess around with the camera yourself. And again, you don't have to use this method when you're using the form, you can always just run it without any uh, initial image and you're gonna have different results because of that. So yeah, so that's how you use After Effects with the form. Hopefully this video was useful. If you want me to make more videos about the form, I do have some in mind that I wanna work on. Uh, I still have to do the music one and I still have to do one where you use control net. I definitely wanna to touch on that and see what I can do with those. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching. And like always, take care. God bless. Peace.